Hi, this is Philip Ador, founder of NCLEX RN 45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a demyelinating disease of the central nervous system, which includes the brain and the spinal cord. Myelin is the protective sheet that surrounds the axons of the neurons, allowing them to quickly send electrical impulses. This myelin produced by oligodendrocytes, which are the group of cells that supports the neurons. In multiple sclerosis, demyelination happens when an immune system inappropriately attacks and destroys the myelin, which makes the communications between the neurons break down, ultimately leading to all sorts of sensory, motor, and cognitive problems. Now the brain, including the neurons in the brain, is protected from the things in the blood with the blood-brain barrier, which only lets certain molecules in cells through from the blood. For immune cells like T and B cells, that means they have to have the right to ligand the surface molecule to get through the blood-brain barrier. This is kind of like having a VIP pass to get into an exclusive club. Once a T cell makes its way in, it can get activated by something it encounters. In the case of multiple sclerosis, it's activated by myelin. Or once a T cell gets activated, it changes the blood-brain barrier cells to express more receptors. And this allows immune cells to more easily bind and get in. It's kind of like bribing the bouncer into letting a lot of people. Now, multiple sclerosis is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction or a cell-mediated hypersensitivity. And this means that those myelin-specific T cells release cytokines like interleukins 1 and interleukin 6 tumors, necrosis factors, and alpha interferon gamma, which together dilate the blood vessels, which allows more immune cells to get in, as well as directly cause damage to the oligodendrocytes. These are the kinds also attract B cells and macrophages, as part of the inflammatory reactions. Those B cells start to make the antibodies that mark the myelin sheet proteins and then the macrophages use to those antibodies markers to engulf and destroy the oligodendrocytes. Without the oligodendrocytes, there are no myelin to cover the neurons. And this leaves behind the areas of the scar tissues also called plaques or sclera. In multiple sclerosis, these immune attacks typically happen in bouts. In other words, an autoimmune attacks on oligodendrocytes might happen and then regulatory T cells will come into inhibit or calm down the other immune cells, leading to a reduction in the information. Early on, in multiple sclerosis, the oligodendrocytes will heal and extend out new myelins to cover the neurons, which is a process called remyelinization. Unfortunately, though over time is the oligodendrocytes die off, the myelination stops and the damage becomes irreversible of the loss of axons. Just like other immune diseases, the exact cause of multiple sclerosis is unknown, but it's linked to both genetic and environmental factors. Genetic risk, genetic risk factors including being female and having genes that encode a specific type of immune molecules called HLA-DR2 which is used to identify and bind to foreign molecules. Environmental risk factors might include infections as well as the vitamin D deficiency, which is an interesting one because it might help explain why the rates of multiple sclerosis are higher at the northern and southern poles compared to the equator where there's a lot more sunlight. Together, the genetic and environmental influences might lead to the body not killing off immune cells that target myelin. So it turns out that there are actually four main types of multiple sclerosis. Based on the pattern of the symptoms over time, to break down, we can use graph with time on the x-axis, or time refers to the lifespan in the individuals and disability on the y-axis. The first and the by far the most common pattern of multiple sclerosis is called relapsing or remitting multiple sclerosis, or RRMs. This condition is what we described. Bouts of autoimmune attacks happening in months or even years apart and causing an increase in the level of disability. For example, during about a person might lose some visions 
but then it might be followed by improvement if there's a remyelinization. Unfortunately though, more often than not, the remyelinization process isn't complete if there's often some residual disability that remains. And that means that with each attack, more and more central nervous system gets irreversibly damaged. In the relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis, there is typically no increase in disability between bouts, so the line stays flat during that time. Now, the second type is called the secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, or the SPMS. The immune attacks becomes constant, which causes a steady progression of, the, of disability. The third type is primary progressive multiple sclerosis, or the PPMS, which is basically one constant attack on by little which causes a steady progression of disability over a person's lifetime. The final type is a progressive relapsing multiple sclerosis, or the PRMS, which is also a constant attack, but this time, they are about superimposed, which means that the disability happens even faster. Specific symptoms vary a lot from the person to person and largely depend on the locations of the plaques and multiple sclerosis typically affects individuals between the ages of 20 and 40. Symptoms related to bouts can typically worsen over weeks and can linger for months without treatment. One common trio of multiple sclerosis symptoms is called Charcot's neurologic triad and it includes dysarthria which is difficulty or unclear speech, nystagmus which is involuntary rapid eye movements and intentional tremor. Dysarthria is due to the plaques in the brain systems that affects the nerves fibers that controls muscles with the mouth and throat and this can interfere with the conscious movements like eating and talking and could lead to things like a newer slaughter as well as unconscious movements like swallowing. Nystagmus is due to plaques around the nerves controlling the eye movements. Plaques around the optic nerve causes loss of vision in one or both of the eyes because of the damage to the optic nerve which is called optic neuritis. Sometimes there's a blurring or graying of the visions. Alternatively, there might be a dark point in the center of the vision. Additionally, if there's a damage to the nerves controlling the eye movement, then the eye movements can be painful and then can be even double vision. If the eyes no longer move in the coordinated way. Finally, intention tremors can be caused by plaques along the motor pathways in the spinal cord which can affect the outbound signals like skeletal muscle control. Motor symptoms can include muscle weakness, muscle spasms, tremors and ataxia, which is a loss of the balance and coordination. In serious cases, this can lead to paralysis. In addition, plaques in the sensory pathways can affect inbound signals like sensations from the skin which can cause symptoms like numbness, pains and needles and paresthesia which are often tingling feelings but might be also painful itching or burning sensations. Occasionally, there can be very specific sensory symptoms like Lermit's sign which is when an electric shock runs down the back and radiates the limbs when a person bends their neck forward. Plaques can also involve the autonomic nervous system, which can lead to bowel symptoms and the bladder symptoms like constipations and urinary incontinence, as well as sexual symptoms like sexual dysfunction. Finally, multiple sclerosis can also affect higher orders activities of the brain, causing poor concentrations and critical thinkings as well as the depressions and anxiety. Multiple sclerosis is typically suspected when there are multiple neurologic symptoms separated in space, which is attributed to damage in different locations in the nervous systems as well as time, meaning separate bouts of flare-ups as well as the remissions. The diagnosis of multiple sclerosis is supported by an MRI that shows multiple central nervous systems lesions called plaque matters since these regions tend to have a lot of myelins. Also in the cerebral spinal fluid, there might be a high levels of antibodies, which indicates an autoimmune process. Finally, a visual evoked potential can be helpful as well as which measures the nervous system's response to visual stimuli. For treatment, there's no cure for multiple sclerosis, but there are medications which are particularly effective 
for the relapsing and remitting type because they lessen the severity of relapses and make them happen less frequently. And an intravenous immunoglobulin can also be used to help blunt the autoimmune process. In addition, plasma phoresis can be effective as well as which when the plasma is filtered to remove the disease causing autoantibodies. Chronic treatment for multiple sclerosis includes immunosuppressants like recombinant beta interferons which decreases the level of inflammatory cytokines in the brain as well as increase in the functions of the T regulatory cells. Other immunosuppressants actually block the T cells from getting into the brain by interfering with the cell surface molecules they use to gain the passage to the brain to the blood brain barrier. Unfortunately, though, there are fewer treatments options available for progressive multiple sclerosis. Instead, treatments are often targeted at managing specific symptoms and everything ranging from depressions to bladder dysfunctions. Physical therapy and cognitive rehabilitation therapy can particularly be helpful with sensory motors and cognitive and cognitive symptoms. Finally, there's also an increasing interest in the role of vitamin D as an effective treatment. All right, as a quick recap, multiple sclerosis is a chronic and progressive autoimmune disorder. And the most common pattern is the relapsing remitting type or individual subflares that come and go, with each one slightly worsening their overall conditions. During a flare, T cells cause inflammations and damage the oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system which leaves behind the scarred areas of demyelinated neurons called plaques, which causes a variety of symptoms depending on the location.